Hello and welcome back, it's Shrike here with another D&D &D video and today I'm going to be giving you an overview of Foundry VTT. I've been using Foundry VDT for some time now and I think I have quite a bit of experience so I can teach you all about it. So this video is going to be an overview of what you can do with Foundry VDT and going into some of the details about how you actually do that. In this video I'm not going to go into every single setting and how to do every single thing in Foundry VDT. If there's anything in particular you want to know how to do, do put it down in the comments below and I'll see if I can do a video on it or at least I'll reply to your comment and answer your question. But this video is more so that if you've never seen Foundry VDT before I can show you what it is and the capability of it and if you have seen it before maybe I'll show you some stuff that you didn't know it could actually do. Before we actually jump into the computer and into Foundry VTT I just want to let you know I upload here on YouTube twice a week every Monday and Thursday so make sure to subscribe if you want to improve your game, take part in D&D discussions or keep up with D&D news. I've also started streaming over at Twitch so if you want to come and ask me some questions and interact with me live make sure to head over to my Twitch channel which is twitch.tv slash shrike dnd and let's have a chat but now let's jump into foundry vdt so what you're looking at now is foundry vdt it might look a little bit different than yours if you've loaded it up before because i've added some modules into it which i'll explain a bit later on in the video but first let's go over the basics and what you can actually do with this tool so here we are in the dm view which we'll go through first and i will show you what the player view looks like later on but let's first just go down all of these icons on the left hand side to explain what they all do and that will help you understand what you can do within Foundry VTT. So this first one at the top is the select tool so you can click on a token and you can click and drag it like you would expect to move it about or you can double click it to bring up the character sheet. If you hold control while you're on this tool as well it does the whole measuring and then you can click again and you can move them around the map and then when you press spacebar it activates and goes in the route that you asked it to. So that's a pretty nice addition so if they have to walk around tables or walk around things they can just hit control and click their route through and still be kept up to date with how much feet they're using. And talking about measurement the second one down is the measurement tool usually for spell effects or ability effects so you can click the circle here choose your point of origin and click it to however big it needs to be. And then it'll give you this red outline which will show who your spell is going to be hitting. And as you can see there is also a cone and a square and then this is is your line tool as well. This third one down here, the tile controls, I haven't used a massive amount. I had a little play around just before this video to see how it works, but this is basically how you would actually make the maps. I would suggest not making the maps in this though, use other tools like Dungeon Draft or Arkham Forge, make the maps and then import them into here. The fourth one down is the drawing tool, so you can just go here and you can put on squares or you can squiggle on the map if you need to. Most of the time I don't use this, but sometimes it's useful if the players don't understand what you're talking about or where on the map you're talking about. You can just do a little circle around it to show them what you're talking about. The next one below that, the wall tools, is an important one. So you can see on this map here, I have put walls where the walls are on the map. And there are various different types of walls you can put down. So you can put down your normal walls, but you can also put down where the doors and the windows are and any secret doors as well. And this is important to do because there is line of sight in this game for the characters and the characters can actually interact with doors. So now I have one of the characters selected, you can see that the walls block the line of sight but you'll also see down here there is a little door icon and if I move my character up to the door I can then click the door and it will open it and view the next room or in this case the outside. As a DM you can also lock the doors so if we move up to this door up here and he clicks it it's not going to let them open the door and it shows that it is locked. But then if they did a thieves tool check or they had the key, the DM on the fly can unlock the door and they'll be able to go through just fine. There are also terrain walls, so if there was a big boulder for example it wouldn't make sense to use walls in the same way. So you can use the terrain walls and then they can still see a lot of the rock. If you would like a video on everything to do with how to place walls and what walls to use where, make sure to put it down in the comments below and if enough people say that they'd be interested in that, I'll make sure to make a video about it. The next one down here is the light controls, so as well as being able to block field of view with walls, you, there is lighting effects in this game. So you can set your characters to have so much range of light and then you can put lights on the map to illuminate certain areas. 
So for example, after deleting the light in this room, if I now click the human character, they have a very small field of view, as you can see there. Whereas if I then go and select the elf, they have a much larger field of view because they have dark vision. So this is really helpful in caves when you have to remind your players to put on the torches and stuff like that. They'll know because they won't actually be able to see anything in the map. There's also daytime light and nighttime light in this tool and here's the buttons to transition between the two nice and easy while you're on the fly in the middle of the session. The next one down this little music symbol here is an interesting one as well because it means you can put ambient sounds on the map so you can see these little circles here. So this is I've put the sound of a fireplace here and then one down here as well and it means that if the characters get close to that they'll start hearing the fireplace so I'll show you how that works now. So I have our human druid selected and I'm going to move him closer to the fireplace and hopefully as we get closer you'll start to hear the subtle hint of a fireplace. If you listen closely enough you should also notice that the closer you are the louder the fireplace is so I'm going to move him away from the fireplace and just listen it should get softer and quieter. and then now it should be gone. So you can set all that up in this tool as well, which is a really nice addition, and it's definitely got some comments from my players who are really impressed with that. And then the final button here is to be able to put notes on the map. There's none on this map, but you can basically click places and put some notes down so you as a DM can read them and remind yourself if you've forgotten about something. So let's go over to the right hand side of the screen now and you'll notice all these icons along the top here and we'll go through all of them now. So this first one is the chat. So you can just chat in here, but you can also do dice rolls. And you'll notice this little drop down here that you can click and then you can do some blind GM roles or private GM roles. So they just go to the GM and the rest of the characters or players don't actually see them. Now usually this bottom bit here wouldn't be here. This is one of the modules that I spoke about earlier. Modules in Foundry VTT are basically add-ons. So there's developers out there that are making really awesome add-ons to Foundry VTT. Some of which are free, some of which are paid for. This one is free and it just means that the players can click some dice, click roll and roll the dice and it'll come up here. I should also say that that visual representation you saw there, that's also a module add-on, so that doesn't usually happen. But later on, we're going to talk through the modules and I'll show you the ones that I use and explain how to add them on. The next icon is the combat tracker, which is super easy to use. It's as simple as I just have to highlight everyone that I need in the combat. Right click any of them and click this little sword and shield icon here. And then you'll see on the right, it adds them to the combat tracker. And then you can click here and it will roll initiative for all of them. Or you can just click them individually here. And the characters or the players, I should say, can also go in here and click their own dice to roll their own initiative. But for the sake of this, I'm just going to roll all at the same time and they will be rolled on the screen because of the module I've got but it just lists it here. This is a good point to say as well that if you right click any of these icons it pops it out and then you can move it to wherever you want so I like putting the combat tracker exactly where my camera is so you won't be able to see that so I'll put it up here and then you just click begin combat and then they know it's that person turn and you can just scroll through until they're all dead and then end the combat. And you can see here, you can click that that person's dead, that person's dead, that person's dead, and it shows in the combat tracker. The little eye next to them as well is to show them hidden. So if you don't want the players knowing that someone secret is in the combat, you can click there and then the players won't be able to see them in the initiative order. The next one here is the scenes directory and it's just a case of creating a scene, importing the media, setting up the gridding, which is a little bit time consuming, but it's not too hard. And then you have it here. You'll notice I have a Waterdeep Dragon Heist folder here. That's because I'm using a module which drags it in from D&D Beyond, which is really helpful. So now if I need to go to this scene and go to this place I can just go there and then you just right click and activate and then it will move everyone into this map. There are some configurations you can do here as well so you can sort out the lighting from here you can have ambient weather effects and stuff like that I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see them but if I put on some rain there's some light rain on here maybe actually if I go to night time it might be a bit easier to see so if I put the darkness level right up 
hopefully you can see that there is just a slight bit of rain going over the map which is also a really nice addition as i said i'm not going to be going into every single thing in this tool but if there's anything in particular you want to know how to do make sure to put it down in the comments below the next one here is where the characters would be or the npcs if you're the dungeon master so i can go to the players here and i can click this one and it's got a very familiar looking character sheet it's pretty self-explanatory if you know how character sheets work in DD. And then as a DM, you can have all your different folders for the different scenarios. So I've got the one for the Xanathasers here. And if they ended up fighting the Intellect Devourer, I can click it and see it here, or I can just click and drag them onto the map and immediately they're now on the map and they can move around just like you would expect them to. Down here is where you can create a new character as well. So you can click create actor, give it a name and it will load up the sheet and you can enter all of the stuff here. Once again, I have got a module that drags it straight from DD Beyond. That is a paid module, but I only think it's about five pound a month if I remember rightly. And it's definitely worth the money for me. It saves me a lot of time than having to create them myself. And then if we jump a few icons over here, this is where all of the source stuff is. So I've got the D&D Beyond stuff here, which you won't have if you haven't got that module. But there's all the other stuff, so you could go into these monsters and grab any from here as well. All of these icons are also another module, so you won't have these. They'll just all have this weird hooded figure. But... You can get all of these modules that I have added on as well. And then if you needed to add them to the scene because they went into the Arctic region and you didn't expect it, so you quickly need a polar bear, you just click and drag it and it will add it to the actors on the right hand side and it will also add it to the map and you can just move it around where you need to. Now it's probably a good point as well to say that you can rotate, flip and transform all of these as well. So if you wanted it to be moving around and looking at this character here and then looking at this character here when it does its second bite attack, you can do that. And if we carry on, the next icon here is the items icon. So you can create some items in here and then they can put it into their equipment. The one after that is where you will put all your journal entries. So if you want to keep notes in this, then you can do. I usually use this for, so if I go into a random one, for example, let's go into friend in need, chapter one, I usually just keep my images in here. And then as you can see, you can click show players and it will force that image in front of all your players so they can see what you're trying to describe. And that's mainly what I use the journal area for. I don't actually keep my notes in there. The next icon is for roll tables. So you can create your own roll tables in the bottom left here. I've had some imported by DD Beyond and it's as simple as you just load it up and it will give you all the options and the weight and the range. And then you just roll and it will go through and give you a random one. And there you go, 16, which was the pot. And the next one is the music tab, which is different to the music symbol over here, which adds ambient sound to the map. This is the music that you'd have on in the background. And you can also set up soundboards and stuff like that. So I have a few playlists here and you can add multiple files to each playlist to give it a bit of variety and you can shuffle it or keep it going, or you can play them on top of each other as well. So there's quite a lot of versatility here as well. If you'd like more detail about this, put down in the comments and maybe I'll do a video just on this. The final tab is the settings tab. So you can go into configure settings and there's quite a lot you can do in here, which I'm not gonna go through in this video. Just have a look through and play with it. If there's anything in particular you need to know, put it down in the comments. And there's a few different things you can look through here. The one that is very important is the information links here. So you can click that and then that's what you give to your players and then they go into the link in their browser and that's how they actually access the tool. So this is now the player view you're looking at. So we're looking as Sal here, which is the human druid we've been using as a bit of an example throughout this video. And you'll see on the left, they have a lot less options than the dungeon master does. And another thing I haven't actually spoken about yet, but my player here has set up is this quick action bar along the bottom. You can click and drag things into here for ease of use. And then you just have to click them from here rather than having to actually go into your character sheet and find them. But you'll see that the player can only move their own token, so I wouldn't be able to move this person's token and I can't double click and gain any access about NPCs in terms of health and stuff like that. And they still have just their same field of view and stuff like that. Now let's go and look at the character sheets themselves. So this is what the character sheet looks like and it has all of the attributes and then if you need to roll something it is just as simple as clicking it. It asks if you need it with advantage, normal or disadvantage and you can put in some situational bonuses here. So if you have guidance for example you could put in plus 1d4 and then you click it and it will roll the dice and put the outcome in the chat over there. 
And that's basically how the character sheet works. You can also track things. So because they're a druid, they're tracking their wild shape here. It has all of their proficiencies and languages and stuff down there. Their inventory. So you can go through and see what you actually have. And then from here is where you would do your weapon attack. So if they wanted to do a dagger attack, they click the dice in the chat. It gives them the information about the dice. They then have to click attack. They once again have to choose advantage, normal, disadvantage. They can click normal. That was a very fast dice. To see if they hit, if they do hit, they can then do the damage. If it's critical hit, they click critical. If it's normal, it's just normal and add it all there. And let's say that that attack was actually made against this player rather than the player making it. The player can then right click here and say apply damage and keep your eye on the hit points here. If you apply damage, it takes the hit points down for you so you don't actually have to do the maths and work it out yourself. And in the same vein that there's also apply healing and apply double damage or half damage. So let's apply healing to put him back up to full health. And in here as well, they've got your features and your spell book. So you can go through all them and from here is where you can roll them as well. But as I said, this player's actually dragged quite a few of them into the quick cast bar down here. So they don't actually have to go into their character sheet at all. I said earlier on that I want to talk about modules as well. They're quite a big part as to why I use Foundry VTT and why I really like it is the customization of it. So from this main screen here, which is the first screen you'll get when you load in, you can go to the add on modules here and install module window down in the bottom left. And from here, there is a really long list of modules that you can install and you can just look through, see the ones you'll like, go and look on Reddit or other places to see what other people are using as well. And you just click install and it adds it on. And then when you're actually in the world, when you're actually on the map, you have to go to settings and module settings and activate it. And it's as simple as that. Now that is part of your world and part of your game. So these are the modules that I'm using at the moment. The dice tray is so that the dice show at the bottom of the chat and I just have to click it rather than typing in 1d4. The dice so nice is the 3d emulation of the dice rolling across the screen. The virtual tabletop assets D&D Beyond integration is what it sounds like. That's me pulling stuff from D&D Beyond. There is a free version of that. I just pay for the paid version, but the free version of that does pull monsters and stuff across as well. The iconizer put some really cool icons against stuff like spells and monsters, which I really liked as well. You probably saw that earlier in the video. And then the tokenizer automatically creates tokens from the art of the characters or the monsters, which just saves me having to create tokens outside of the tool and then bring them in. And just to show you how you actually activate them in the world, once you're in, you just have to go to the settings and then to manage modules and tick them and click save. And it's as simple as that. And then you'll see in your configure settings, in the module settings, all of the individual settings for each of your add-ons or modules, I should say. And there you have it. That's pretty much everything I wanted to show you about Foundry VTT. If you have questions about anything in particular, make sure to put them down in the comments. I really like it. The modules definitely help me customize it to exactly what I want it to be, which is really good. And there's a lot of really awesome developers out there that are making some great add-ons for the tool. If you found this video useful, please do give it a like. It helps me to grow the channel and subscribe if you want more videos like this or other videos that will help you improve your game. But until next time, happy gaming.